Welcome to Chasing the Hard podcast, where we talk about trusting God when life doesn't turn out the way you plan. If you've been alive for any amount of time, I'm sure you have experienced something in your life, whether big or small, that didn't turn out quite like you thought it would. It could be a major life-altering event or even small things that that add up. Um, it's human. It's part of the human process, I guess. It's part of living in a broken world. And thank God we have a, um, a redeemer. I am excited to have my real live in-person friend, Pam, with me today, even though we haven't seen each other in a long time. Welcome to the podcast, Pam. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. Um, besides your major move, maybe not across country, but several hundred miles or a few, a thousand-ish miles. Yeah, it's about 650, I think. Okay, okay. It's still a big deal to relocate like that, but other than that, or even that, do you have an incident in your life that didn't go quite how you thought it would go? And you had to figure out what to do with not just that situation, but how you were going to relate with God because he, he, you feel like you prayed about it or maybe he, whatever the feelings are that surrounds the incident. I have several, but uh, when you put it that way, (laughs) I think we all do. We do. But um, yeah, the one about my move, um, it didn't go exactly as I had expected. Um, This was something that my husband and I have been planning for several years. We um, came down and visited different areas of where we wanted to live. And I had worked with my supervisor about, you know, working remotely. And then in the office, and, you know, she said we could see how we can make that work when that comes to um, the time. So when it came to the time, I ended up with a different supervisor. And this supervisor decided that Um, she wanted me in the office three days a week. Wow. So that was a big change because I was only working one day a week in the office. And I had planned to um, basically work remotely three day, weeks a month and then come in and work in the office for that entire week. Um, the benefit of that would have been to, um, you know, visit with my grandbaby, my mom and dad, my relatives, my friends, um, see, still have the same doctors and hairdresser and mm-hmm. dentists and everything. So when wow. that happened, we thought, and by that time we had already purchased a place and uh, my husband just said, just put in your notice, you know? So I Whoa. left it in the Lord's hands and put in my notice. Um, That's, a had, That's a big, big deal. That's a big, big deal. deal. I mean, you had this thing all planned out. It was like, you're going to, you've been working remotely. You're work, going to work remotely and move 600 and some odd miles from home. And then, wow. Yeah. So I've had total peace about it. Um. My husband's like, it's time for you to go work. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but, so, um, so your husband, did he, did he transfer? He, no, he's, he's been working remotely for okay. probably 15 years okay. I mean, before, before COVID and all that. Right. And then my daughter moved with us and she works remotely and her job is remote. She has to be in the office one day a quarter. Oh, wow. For a meeting. So she just, we, you know, I just went up with her the end of the May, I mean, end of April, she had a a meeting and I finished up the house because we put the house on the market, like the day after we moved out and then it sold the next day. So, um, you know, I had to finish everything up that we didn't quite get to. Um, and so I've been here busy unpacking, That's um, leaving my uh, financials in my Lord's hands because mm-hmm. I, you know, a large part of me identifies with who I am at, right. who I'm employed with. Now, about um, about a year ago, I um, had a friend who had been on a health journey and had done very well, lost all her weight and had kept it off. And so I decided to, I reached out to her and and um, I went on the same health journey and um, still am on it and doing well and lost 40 pounds in like oh, wow. 
four months, my husband decided he would do the same. Wow. So then I decided to coach, which I've been doing. And I got six new clients mm -hmm. in April. So that's been keeping me busy. And, okay. you know, that's great. Um, and now I'm just trying to figure out what exactly the Lord has for me. Because mm -hmm. I've had total peace about it. When I pray about it, I still have total peace mm -hmm. about it. Um, one thing that did come up today, as a matter of fact, I was doing a post um, because I someone had brought up the. I saw your post. <laughs> I made a note. I was going to talk to you about that. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's mental health awareness, yes, and so I started thinking about my mental health, and um, I'm very aware because I have some relatives who have had some mental health issues. So you know, I try to be. Um, very cautious, but um, what he led me to today was that um, I hear this voice um, a few years back, probably four or five years ago, maybe six. Uh, I was in a group of um, directors, and uh, our old supervisor who had left and gone to work for another company was talking to us and said, hey, you know, if any of y'all want to get a job, you know, I could help you get another job, even you, Pam. Wow. And yeah. now the other directors were in charge of particular subjects and mine was customer service. So we had the whole group. So we supported everyone mm -hmm. and many things throughout the whole company. And at the time that bothered me. I thought, even me, what does he mean by that? <laughs> but now <laughs> that I'm, you know, looking for work, you know, seeing what mm -hmm. does the Lord have for me? Mm -hmm. Does he want me to be a full time health coach does he want me to also have another job because mm -hmm. I really enjoy the health coaching because I really enjoy encouraging people and helping mm -hmm. them through issues and I was born a problem solver you know that's like what is innate to me so um and so I realized mm -hmm. today that that little voice has played a huge yeah. part because when I go to apply for a job I'm like um, even you, Pam, you know, can you do this job, right. Right. you know, or to excel as a health coach, you know, there's so uh, much options out there. I'm like, yep. well, is that me? Right. You know, or is the spirit of scarcity holding me back based mm. on those three words? Yeah. I want to talk about that. And I'm actually glad that you brought that up, but, but I just was just curious, how long were you with your other company? The, the, uh, it was almost know, 14 years that's crazy that was probably yeah. like that was probably a hard thing to deal with emotionally as well well and if I had worked two more years I could have retired oh my gosh yeah wow. so I just needed two more years so yeah. you know that's hard and that's a whole nother discussion because right. I applied for this job that I was way qualified for but they gave it to the person they had already promised it to who wasn't as qualified for it, yeah. but I really have uh, had to stop and feel like the Lord is in control mm -hmm. and, you know, what, whatever's supposed to happen, he's got me. Yeah, that's good. You know, I mean, we just sold the other house, so we don't have two mortgages anymore. That's good. So, yeah. You know, right. That's a big thing. That, so, that's a big deal. Know. Yeah. I was in a similar situation recently. I, I work at a church and the team that I'm on, I'm a part of a bigger team, but the actual, it's a pastoral coordination team. And mm -hmm. so there are only two of us and my coworker retired at the end of March. And so there's only been me and we're in the, they're in the process of hiring someone and it looks like um, they found a good candidate, but she's overqualified. And so when I heard that, I was like, wow, overqualified. Like, what does that mean even? What am I, you know, um, was I mm -hmm. under, like, because I've only been in this position for pro not e a year, not even a year and a half, but close. And so the, I, they introduced me to her last week at one of the interviews and I know, knew all her credentials and I'm like, wow, I'm feeling really intimidated, even though I told my supervisor, like, I want someone who's better than me. Like, I want to to be able, the, the bar to be raised. And so that will mm -hmm. challenge me. And plus, it'll be good for the, the team as a whole. Right. And then yeah. I was like, what? 
I mean, I still wanted that, but like we could have, you know, we could have got somebody a little more closer to what mm-hmm. I thought would be in, in my league. But anyway, um, yesterday was the final interview and there were several people in the room. Um, two, two people are my supervisor and his supervisor and people were saying things to me like, um, because I did make a, a comment. I'm a jokey person, but all jokes have a little bit of truth to them, right? And I'm like, yeah. can we just hire her? Because I know she's overqualified, but I'm tired of working alone. And and like, you know, let's just do it. And and if I have to give a notice, give my notice, I'll just do that later. And I'm just joking. And so a little later at various points after the, the candidate was out of the room, um, they all, they all, my, both supervisors and then the others agreed, like you, don't be intimidated. Like, yes, she has this skill set right here, but you bring things that nobody else will bring. And that was just hard to sit there and be comfortable with that. Like I'm comfortable right. in my role. I love what mm-hmm. I do and I'm comfortable there, but here's someone say that to me is, is weird. It's hard because I mm-hmm. guess I don't think of myself that way. I don't know. It's, it's sort of the other side of the coin. When someone does say something, to you because my tendency is and i heard myself say y'all are killing me stop stop um i don't know how to to take that when someone is validating what i'm doing (laughs) a good job or whatever so it's hard well and different personalities take that differently that's like i you know that was one of my big issues when i left my last company was what are they going to do since I, they had that new supervisor and she yeah. doesn't do things like the way we expect that to be done. Is she going to fill that position? We were already so busy. I mean, there was easily enough work for me to work remotely and, and to work 40 hours would be wow. less work for me, you know, cause I always put in all the extra time <laughs> yeah. and done everything. Yeah. So I was really worried about my team, you know, and yeah, how they feel. For sure. But yeah, I get the, um, some of my team members would love for me to say, hey, you're doing a great job in front of everybody. And some of my team members yeah. would be like, don't, don't you say dare that. say that right. out loud. Right. You know, you we can, when we're one-on-one, if you want to send me flowers and tell me thank you, yeah. that is totally fine. But to publicly say something yeah. to you in front of others, you just like crawl back. And yeah. That. And maybe that's it because I, my one supervisor is very encouraging and does do that. I think it was the setting that I was in as well. Mm-hmm. Um, some people I don't know as well as the people on my immediate team. And so, yeah, I think you're right. It's the setting, but also it has to be, it has to have something to do with what I bought into about what I believe about myself deep down inside. Hello, mental health awareness month. You know, I mean, right. there are things I know. Exactly that I believe about myself that really aren't, it's not true. And I'm not getting my worth from the the true, to the creator, the, the one who made me exactly who I am. So, yeah. Yeah, That's I agree. Cool. I feel like anytime you have to fill out a self-appraisal, kind I of did. in the same boat. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's hard for me to say positive things about myself, although I feel them and I think them. And I know that, you know, like I can apply for a job and go, I can do all this stuff, sure. you know, then for somebody to ask me about it, I'm just like, well, you know, you know, yeah. because you just, I hate to toot my own horn, Yeah. but I've realized in life, you have to, you no one else to. is going to know that. And especially when looking for a job, because yes. they can read what's on the paper, but that's all they know. Right. You know, they don't know that you do all this extra stuff and you go out of your way to yeah. make things accommodating for people and bend over backwards. I mean, I can't tell you one of the people where I was working was surprised that I had, he probably was sitting down there figuring out I had gone <laughs> away from the office 15 different times to meet somebody somewhere else to do yeah. the stuff they needed to get done because they couldn't come to where they needed to wow. do it. And that was just in a year. Yeah. I'm like, who's going to do this stuff, you know, with yeah. me not here, you know? So um, I get when you sit down and start thinking about all that, mm-hmm. if you made a list of all the stuff you brought to it, be like, yeah. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah. And we don't typically do that or, you know, like accolades or whatever. But yeah. Um. So 
so you're still trying to figure out you don't have you put in any applications in or you're just still at the oh, figure yeah. out stage okay I've, well, that's another thing because i've put in a lot of applications oh, okay and you get those notes you know they it's either kind of, a decided not to fill the position or b they have selected a candidate you know yeah. and i've done some training and they said that Pretty much in today's world, about 75% of all jobs are filled based on networking. Wow. So, you know, I did, first, I, heard, I did hear a stat like that, and it was staggering to, to think that most people's resumes, and there was a figure that they gave the percentage of resumes that do not get read because it is more about networking, not really mm -hmm. about the resume that you send in, which is yeah. crazy. Right. So that's why at first I wasn't telling anybody. Oh. And then when I heard that stat, I was like, oh, people yeah, need to know, know that I'm looking for a job, yeah. you know? Well, good. So then I started networking more and letting people know that I was looking and that. So, but, you know, that's why I think I feel like I have this peace because I know that the Lord's in control. And, um, and I've been downsized probably six times. Oh, wow. I mean, wow. Over the course of my life. You know, I've been downsized many times, but I've never just quit a job without having a job. Right. I mean, that's just like, you don't yeah. do that. I preach that right. to my kids, Yes, you know, but in this situation, you know, I felt like it shouldn't be a hard time to get a job. I mean, right. I have a lot of experience in yes. a lot of areas, but, you know, it's finding the right job. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was on a meeting this morning, networking meeting where they were talking about having those hard bosses that, you know, don't treat you properly and everything. And I thought, well, maybe that's why I don't have a job mm, yet, you know, right. or, or maybe I'm just supposed to be a full-time health coach because that's what I love. And that's I mean, ideally, I know, if that. I had a choice, that's what I do. And my husband would like um, the income I had at my previous job. Sure. <laughs> so, of course. But he also likes that I can do everything at the house and I've totally unpacked. And, you know, right. I couldn't have, couldn't have done half of what we probably Three fourths of what we've done mm. had I been working exactly. still. So, you know, I really feel like the Lord's in control and that it will all work That's out. Um, but in the meantime, um, that post this morning was a wide awakening for me that I could, I didn't realize it was that much until I Ready. sat and wrote about it. You wow. Know? That so is I pretty, guess, that's pretty amazing that, that you, we're aware and and then how words do affect us yeah it, i mean that was three words together that you know i probably told myself probably reheard in my head probably 100 times right, just wow. in the last couple months you know yeah and i'm like i have got to stop playing that chord yeah it's and time to take over that tape that's good <laughs> and there are probably because that's just your conscious awareness probably subconsciously you're even more aware mm -hmm. so that of the message that was playing in your head so that's kind of crazy but good for yeah, you that makes me wonder how has it played in everything yes. else how has it played in the resume in my in my cover letters even in my coaching you know when I've done this training and you can do go over, do very well in uh, you know, I do the training and then I'm like, well, is that me? You know, am, am I capable of, and I know that I'm capable of, I've led lots of teams with lots mm -hmm. of employees and lots of people who have exceeded above or have grown and moved on to new jobs and I've mentored people. So I know that physically I can do it, can do it. you know. I just have to get out of my head about it. Yeah. Oh, the way out of your head. Yeah. And that's easier said than done in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully something you'll, hopefully you'll figure it out. Doors will open that are supposed to open and you'll be able to walk through whatever it is God has for you. Yeah. I mean, shortly after I made that post, someone who is not even a Facebook friend reached out and said, Hey, are you a coach? Can you help? And I was wow. like, okay, Lord, That's you know, funny. maybe this is what you need, what you have for me. You know, yeah. nice. I'm just trying to do what, what he has for me. That's good. Because again, if you do the, you know, we always say this in the health coaching, even if it's the right program at the wrong time, mm. it's still wrong. So it's the same thing with jobs, you That's know, true. it has to be the right thing at the right, at the time. right time. Yeah. And then it will work out. 
That's so. good. So I know you have, you said one of your, your daughters moved with you guys. You have more than, you have a yeah. few kids, right? Yeah, I have a son who's in Fort Knox and then a daughter who's in Louisville. So. Okay. So, and I'm, and you said grandkids. So you have grandkids? I have one, a granddaughter, and she's the one in Louisville where my mom and dad are too, and my siblings. And so, how hard is that else. for you? Well, it, it, it's hard. Um, it was harder to leave at the beginning mm. because, you know, like she looked up at me and go, Mimi please don't sell your house. You need to stay here with me. And I was like, oh my God, my heart's broken. Uh, yes, right? yes. But then she says, can I write you two letters a week? And I said, well, that's really up to your mom, you know, but she's not quite five yet. She'll be five next month, but I haven't gotten a single letter yet. So oh. she's not really missing me. She doesn't really have that concept of time yet. Yeah. You know, and then I came in already, you know, after three weeks and I'm coming back up for Memorial Day and then they're coming oh, down cool. for Good. um 4th of July and so I'm feeling like I'm not going to go my school still is not to go too long without right. being home and that's the one thing I told my husband when we were looking I said wherever we decide it's fine as long as there's a cheap direct flight to Louisville that's good so that's good. and then we have several options for that so you know Good. I feel like I could be there within a couple hours That's pretty amazing. much anywhere I am yeah. so you know I think that that gives me a little rest and then oh and my daughter got engaged as soon as I left so oh. now we have a wedding to plan so oh wow we're doing a little that remotely and then I'm yeah. sure I'll be in a little more often to yeah. um, help with that as well so That's, that is good I I was born and raised here and all my family is here. Um, my youngest moved to California mm-hmm. two, two and a half years ago, which was super hard. Like, right. and I, I remember thinking, you know, okay, so I just have to figure out how to not really do this long distance, but how to keep them a part of my life, the, right. the life of the family long distance. And then it kind of hit me because he was young when he moved, he was 25, that, yeah, that's probably not. I mean, we still stay in touch, of course, but he's not, oh, yeah. he doesn't live here. Like he can't be a part of this. We can FaceTime or whatever. He's on, he's in a t- different time zone. Right. It's different. And so that idea, I had to put put that to rest and then look at reality and, and how can we make, have a long distance relationship. Basically, my goal was to see him once a quarter, which is mm-hmm. pretty much worked. Um, but that's, four times a year. Like I'm mm-hmm. used to all of my kids around me and seeing them a few times a month mm-hmm. or more. And now four times a year, it's weird and different. Yeah. My mom had that same thing when my sister moved from Louisville to Colorado. Yeah. She lives in Colorado Springs. And that was really hard for her. Mm. Uh, my brother's always lived away. Um, oh, really? You know, once he left the house, he, my older brother, he's never came back home. Mm. Um, but he's probably the closest he's ever been because he's in Missouri right now. Oh. Um, so we've been actually, we all were there for Easter and then we're all going to be there for Memorial okay. Day. So, um, you know, which is the first time that's happened in a very long time. Wow. So. Um, you know, I had to be more intentional out for a reason, yeah. you know, and that's what my mom said, you know, I'm, I'm sad that you're leaving, but I know that we'll make it work. And so. that's exactly like, um, I was sad that Luke left, but I'm real excited for what he's doing. He's, he was right. call, this position opened up for him and it's, it's who, who he is, it's what God had planned right. for him. So love that for him. Don't like it for me. On a certain level, but on another level, hey, I never went to California before he moved out there and California is a pretty cool place. So when I go yeah. visit him, I get to see some really cool sites. So, so right, the right. silver lining, there's always a silver lining, I feel like. Yeah. And that's how we felt with Colorado when we go out and visit my sister. We yeah. get to Cause that's a beautiful, see all the cool places. Yeah, beautiful yeah. state. Anything else? Let me, let me look at our time. Um, anything else you want to talk about before we wrap this up? Or was that your main, which is a huge, like my, yeah, that's, yeah huge. that's, that's really my main, okay. you know, thing that is heavy on my heart right now. And that I'm trying to look positive, mm-hmm. choose joy. You know, my word for the year has been an encourager. 
That's what I try to be to others. And I have to remember to do that to myself as well. But I feel like um, I pretty much embraced that. And I've been checking in at my old office to make sure they're well. And Aww. is there anything I could do to help them? You know, just Aww. because I, I, I want to see them succeed as well. Yeah, you know, I spent too. a lot of time building up a whole new team and new department and stuff. So, you know, just. That's a big deal. And that's that. Uh, that's good that you you care about them. I mean, just because you're yeah. not there, you do care about them and want them to succeed. So, yeah, what, just what having you... that peace, yeah, that peace the Lord gives you makes a huge difference because I know I'm doing the right thing because I have the peace about it. And How when they... I'm not doing the right thing, then I don't that's have that peace. peace. How do they respond to you when you reach out? Oh, good, good. No hard feelings. Um, I went into the office end of april i had my last day was april 3rd everybody gave me a hug Aww. so glad to see you how are you doing you know so you know i, I think that um you know I, I have a lot of um friendships with people that i've worked in previous jobs mm-hmm. okay so um you know i feel like you know you're there for a reason when mm-hmm. i was there i felt like it was my mission field um and now the lord has something else for me yeah, that's cool. Have you, have you, is there a church that you're, that you love? Oh, yes. Moved? Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. That was a real neat story. If you have just a minute, sure. I can tell you about it. Yeah. Um, we were here looking at, at places like it was Sunday and Monday. We had several places lined up and I was looking, I, you know, we were like, what about church? You know, right. so I pull up on my phone and I'm like, oh, this sounds, this place sounds good. And so we were listening to the sermon. We had missed the music. Um, but the sermon was good. We liked it, you know, and um, then we came and saw the house we have now, the townhouse. Mm-hmm. And then we came out from the townhouse to go to the next place and we drive by the church. Oh, wow. And I was like, OK, Lord, this might be the right. Wow. One then, That's, you know, yeah. so, um, you know, just felt like I mean, so it, there just wasn't even an option. We went. Cool. We enjoyed the music, okay. too, because um, once we had previously tried a few online just as mm-hmm. we were looking uh, we knew we were going to be moving you know what kind of churches maybe that will determine where we move mm-hmm. be close to the church you know um but you know it just kind of worked out and we really like it and it ends up the the yeah. pastor's wife is from louisville wow. and uh, he got he married they got married in louisville and wow. you know, it's a small world right that is a <laughs> and this one. is a big church this is like you know has their own school and oh. everything it's it's a big church so well, that, yeah you know to have that connection, connection you're like for what? sure yeah that's that so, sounds like a god connection and yeah i know you have a, all the things that you're dealing with but the the good the plus side i guess is you live close to the beach Oh, definitely. Eight minutes. Eight minutes from our house to the beach. So, okay. and then, and we live on a canal. So, oh. um, Mike saw a he saw a, a dolphin this morning. You know, so yeah, it's a rough um, life, right? Yeah, yeah somebody <laughs> has to do. Somebody it, right? does, so, and you're doing so I, it. So good for you. Ideally, I'm looking for a job. I work from home, like I do with my health yeah. coaching, because you know, I got yes. a beautiful view, and it's, and then I can also what I like to do is still work from Louisville, work um, Florida, you know, that way I have that, yeah. you know, so good. flexibility, be wherever you need to be. Yeah, I like so. it. So do you have, maybe not even um, a situation similar to you, but just someone who's going through a hard time and having to make some important decisions, anything on your heart that you would want to say to someone? And maybe it is a relocation. What would you say? What do you want to say to the person? We'll, we'll go with relocating. It, they want to, but things aren't falling into place. What would you say to them? Well, I honestly feel like when it's the right time, it will work out. It will work out. So with relocation, um, we have a history of miscarriages. So we mm-hmm. adopted. Mm-hmm. Um, my son's wife is now having same, similar issues. Mm-hmm. And I can't can't tell her enough and him that it's all in God's timing. You know, sure. when it doesn't work out, it's because it's not the right time. You sure. know, and I, it's hard to understand when you're in that time. It is. But 
hindsight, you're like, okay, this makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say about anything that doesn't seem to be working out right. Mm -hmm. Pray about it. Have others pray about it. Get in the right groups and get them praying about it. Because when you have that peace, Mm -hmm. then you know it's the right time or what to do or how to move forward or, you know, what's going on. Um, And then I take every experience as a way to help others. So, you know, I, I, you know, who would have known my son's wife would have the same problems that I had, you know, but, um, and others, I've coached many people who were in similar situations, you know, with having problems, having children. So, you know, it's just whatever it is in your life, you know, that my health goes I mean, I had years and years trying to figure out how to lose this weight. I used to blame my daughter, who's 25 now, for the baby weight. <laughs> yeah. And at 24, when she was 24, yeah. I finally lost it all and had kicked it off, you know. There you go. I was like, well, I can't blame you anymore for that. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, some, you know. If someone's looking for um, a health coach, where do they find you? Um, well, you can always find my Facebook. It's um, Pam, I'm listed as Pam Ruig Frank. Or um, my email is um, pamfrank03 at gmail.com. Okay. But, um, and yeah, uh, or my phone number. I could even give that if you want me to. Mm, it's up to you. <laughs> it's 502-345-1209. So, um, you know, I like to help people wherever they're at and whatever mm-hmm. I can do to do the help with that, you know, that makes me feel good. Sure. I just, if I see a problem that I can help solve, you know, that makes my day. That's who you are. That's so, so cool. Well, thank you yeah. for spending some, a small portion of your day here talking with me. I appreciate it. Well, I really appreciate it, Laurie, and appreciate you asking me to mm-hmm. join you. Yeah. And thank you for joining us on the podcast. Um, I'll be back next week. I hope you are too.